hey, well, this is part three. And we're going to use an object to count elements, and we're going to do it twice. So this is the first one. We're going to write a function called count words. So given a string, words separated by spaces, count words returns an object where each key is a word in the given string, with its value being how many times that word appeared in the given string. If given an empty string, your function should return an empty object. So let's grab our test cases. Let's grab our function stub. And let's get to it. So if we have a string of words, uh, I would prefer that, especially based on these two examples, it'd be nice if these words were in an array. And it turns out we actually have a way of doing that. So we're going to split the input string into an array of words. However, we missed something. And the first thing that we should always do is check to see if there are any edge cases. And there are. We have one here that says, if given an empty string, your function should return an empty object. So I'm going to say, if string of words, and since it's a string, it's a scalar value, and we can literally compare it to an empty string. You can't do this with an array, and you shouldn't worry about why. You should just worry about that you can't. It's like, so if this was an array, and we wanted to see if it was empty, you'll recall that we compare it, its length to zero rather than comparing it directly to an empty array. One of those things, more details to follow later, possibly. So we'll say, if input is empty string, return empty object. And we can just create an object literal like that. And an object literal means just open and close curly braces, and it makes an actual object right there. So split the input string into an array of words. That seems reasonable. We're probably going to need a result object, though. So we'll say create result object, result count object, something like that. Split the input string into an array of words. Then since we have an array of words, we'll iterate over the array of words. Now we're inside of the iteration, and we also might want to jump down. I feel like one of the things in the accumulator pattern we just skipped was return the result count object. So create a result object, return it at the end, split the input string into an array of words, and this is preparing for our iteration. So now we have an array of words over which we can iterate. So if we iterate over the array of words, here's where we're going to, um, what would you do, uh, adhere to the pattern that we just learned. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check if current word is in result object. And we do that by comparing the value in the object at the current word for a key and to see if that value is undefined. If it is, or as let's say is not in result object, because we'll compare it to undefined. And if it's not, we will instantiate current word with value current word in object with value of one. Otherwise, we know we have already counted that word at least once, so we will increment value of current word in object by one. And that's, and that's it for the pseudocode anyway. So now create a result count object is just going to be counts is equal to an empty object. Return the result object is going to be return counts. Split the input string into an array of words. Oh no, my plugin crashed. Oh hey, it's back. All right, we're going to copy all of this, refresh the page. And we're going to, what's it called? Manage our frustration, uh, uh, what would you say, gracefully. And, okay, cool. So split the input string into an array of words. What I would say is we could say something like variable words is equal to string of words. And then the method that we want to use here is called split. So split, and we're going to pass a space to it. It's going to split the input string of words at each space, and the result is going to be an array of words. So now we want to iterate over the array of words. So we'll say for variable i is equal to zero, i is less than words dot length, i plus plus. Now I would prefer that an alias is going to help us out. So I'm going to say current word is equal to words at i. 
Now, the reason this is going to help us out is because the notation of putting this as a key inside of an object being accessed with bracket notation confuses some people. So I'm just going to say current word, and current word is the key. So check if the current word is not in the result object. We know how to do that. That's going to be a not simple process, but straightforward anyway. First thing I'm going to do is wrap my if else statement around my pseudocode, which again, you don't have to do, but can be useful. So check if current word is not in the result object. The result object is called counts. To access the value of the current word, I'm going to say counts at current word. And I'm going to check to see if that's equal to undefined. If it's equal to undefined, this is going to need to be instantiated with a value of 1. If it's not undefined, then we know there's a valid value for this already, and so we're just going to increment it by 1. And that's it. So we've got our edge case. We return an empty object in the case of an input of an empty string. We create a variable for our counts. We split the string of words into split the string of words into actual words so that it's an array. We iterate over that array. We create an alias for the current word. We check to see if the counts is undefined at the current word. If it is, we know we need to make that value one because we've now seen it once. And if it's not undefined, we go to the else portion where we just increment the value. Then finally, we return counts. So let's run it and see what we get. Looking pretty good so far. So at this point, we're gonna copy the function, bring it back to the input window, paste it in, and looks good. Excellent work. So thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in the next one.